So high growth, high PE stocks are always at some degree of volatility risk because they're going up so fast and because the businesses are growing so fast. There's always the danger that something is not quite to the market's liking or we get uh, a general sentiment shift where the really high PE stocks get slammed. And so you're always going to get volatility in those sort of stocks. It's unavoidable. So if you if you want to play in these sort of stocks, then you've got to accept that that's part of the territory. So as I said, it could be a general sentiment shift, it could be stock-specific announcement, or it could be uh, a change in their outlook. In other words, the story's just not as good as what people thought. And traders and investors are very good at taking what looks like a promising story and make it in, and turn it into reality before it's happened and start to price it in. And I'm sure that not all of the Australian current high flyers that include Afterpay, Touch, Altium, Wisetech Global, uh, Appen, uh, etc., are all going to succeed. Um, I would just be staggered if they all succeeded and uh, you know were substantially bigger companies in the future. I think there's going to be a couple of failures along the way. So the key here is not only to get into the ones that are going to pay you off handsomely, it's to minimize the damage uh, of the ones that aren't going to succeed. <clears throat> so if the story is intact, so if there's a stock-specific announcement or there's a general sentiment shift that sees a, uh, a, a big move down in the stock price, but if the story is still intact, then it's just a temporary setback. Um, and you should be open to a multi-trade approach. So if you get um, if you get kicked out the first time, if it doesn't work, if you get in at a certain price and you set a stop loss, which is reasonable, and your stop loss is triggered, uh, and so you get out, then don't just leave it at that. Don't just then abandon that stock because it may well be that this is just some of this volatility that visits these stocks every now and again. So I think you need to cultivate a multi-trade approach to these sort of stocks. And you know, don't, don't feel hard done by if the first or second time you have a crack at them, it doesn't work. It doesn't invalidate the, the possibility. And if you can get it right on the second, third or even fourth occasion and make five times your money, then you know, you've well and truly uh, covered all of your losses many, many times over. Uh, I would also recommend that you consider a multi-stage accumulation. So rather than buying uh, all of the stock that you're going to buy in one hit, that you perhaps accumulate it in two or three portions. And I know that from the questions that I get, that many of you uh, have adopted and embraced that sort of approach. Um, I think it's really important to ease your way into some of these uh, trades uh, over time. Now, just some general thoughts on entry. Ideally, if you can enter when the price is oversold on a weekly chart. Now, that requires a fairly substantial dip to get oversold on a weekly chart. Uh, and it also requires a fairly significant uh, dip in the price over a reasonably lengthy period of time, generally at least a month or two minimum. Now, that doesn't happen all that often in really, really strong uptrends. Um, so that's the ideal. You don't get a shot at that very often. Uh, moving in a little closer and something that does happen far more normally is that in a strong uptrend, that if we get a pullback to the 50-day moving average or we get to a daily oversold position on the RSI, um, that that should offer good support. Now, nothing is perfectly guaranteed in the market, but if you've got a strong uptrend uh, that hasn't got too far ahead of itself uh, and you waited for a pullback to the 50-day or oversold on, on an RSI on a daily chart, then you the odds are with you. That, that's for sure. The overwhelming odds are going to be with you. Um, Clear-cut reversals are fantastic where you get a sharp sell-off and then you get a big green engulfing candle that just takes out you know, two or three days of the, the previous downside, then that's fantastic. Um, and you want to be absolutely jumping all over those. Um, but we don't see them very often. 
And the second difficulty with that is that when a stock is sold off quite sharply, um, investor sentiment is generally uh, pretty shaky. And you've got to really have some courage of your, con your, con your, courage of your conviction um, to get on board. <clears throat> and I always remember probably one of the most difficult trades, but one of the most profitable trades that I ever made was in BHP uh, coming out of the GFC. And if you look at the chart of, price chart of, of BHP, it was just going down and down and down. And then we got this big reversal day, single day, huge green candle, completely engulfed uh, the prior day's action. Um, and I was able to get in, uh, I think at around $21.00. And within a week, BHP had gone from $21 to $30. You don't see those reversals very often. They're difficult to take because everyone's psychology is just, you know, generally shattered. And the last thing you want to be thinking about doing is um, is buying stocks. But really, that's when the, some of the best opportunities come up.